Welcome back. Today, we're going to get sanding on this and finally get this cruddy paint job, if you can call it that, off. I already started by removing the door panel because every time I open and close it, it catches on the rocker and it rips more. There's what the sun does to your car when it sits out in it for too long. Got one more panel here to fall down, so I'll probably remove it all. Gonna remove a lot of stuff to get this going. Removing these door handles and the door pulls and the window cranks. There's this clip in there and you have to find where it is, where this end of it is, and then you push it out and then you can pull it off because it locks into this groove. So the trick is fine in that. There is a special tool for that, but I just take two scrapers, push the panel back, find where it's at, and then just pop it off. So we'll do the other side and then we'll start removing the remainder of the trim. So that is the headliner pattern. It's pretty groovy, isn't it? I only have one sun visor and it's in pretty good shape and it has the same pattern on it. It's kind of a shame. Onto the door panel. I'm gonna take this door panel off as well and maybe we can get a shot of me struggling to get this off. So you just gotta bend this clip up enough and see how it's out of square and when you bend it it makes it so it's square like it's off center of, of the hole in the handle. I remember making a tool to do this on my dart. I just took a butter knife and bent the tip so when you slide the butter knife under the tips in here and can push on that and I can't find it. I ended up making a tool. It took all of 30 seconds from a scrap piece of metal to slide it next to the door panel. Once you grab that clip you just push down and it pops right off. So now it's four screws. Pop this off. There should be some random clips that are non-rotted, still holding on. That might be salvageable. Just like the driver's side, there's a whole bunch of trash in here. The driver's side had undercoating on the inside of the door. This one doesn't. That's bizarre. This actually looks like a replacement door. The driver's door has the full dark gray on the inside. The whole door was sprayed, but there's the undercoating and it's rusty because the undercoating, of course, got water under it. That's probably non-factory duct tape. Now that the door panels are off and when I open and shut the door, I'm not ripping them off every time, I can get on to the meat and potatoes, which is the rest of the trim. And then we're sanding. So I can't get to the bolts that hold this piece to these. So I had to take it off in one shot. So there's just two bolts that are stuck in that I gotta take out and then we can just take the whole thing off. License plate, center, this, the whole shebang. Pull it away, I'll bring it my way. I've been waiting for this since I got this car, so let's get to it. This DA is totally shot. I had to actually take the trigger apart, but it should work. Okay, a little more air. This is worse than I thought. This red primer, the prior owner had sprayed on top. 
but there's also gray primer that he had sprayed on top of that and then there's where he went down to the metal and then you finally get into the the dark gray and the silver which this car was which you can see here where he didn't get into So here's a perfect example. So that's the red primer he put on top, and it's pretty thick. And then there's the gray primer he had put on underneath that. And then there's the gray of the car. And then there's spots where he just went to the metal. Like there's all these gouges, like I did not do this. I started with 180, and then I went to 80, because this red primer is extremely thick. And that's like a, that's like a flow of red primer right there and you can see here I didn't touch this car yet other than that fender and all these DA marks so this wasn't me and he did this and down to the metal and that's why it rusted so it's like all swirled and rusted and pitted and this car is not small I thought it was just a patchwork like he sprayed some red primer and then he sprayed some gray primer when he ran out but apparently he was just spraying primer sanding primer sanding primer sanding down to metal not down to metal so i think the plan is to get a better da i have a better compressor but i don't have i don't have it wired so i'm going to see what i can get done today and try to just do one fender here's where we're at this fender has to be the worst body panel on the car. All that Bondo was hiding, all these dents and some kind of wackiness. I forget where else. I think there was Bondo all in here. Yeah, there's a big dip here. Some all over here, some down there. So I think this fender's had some major work over the years. How much, I don't know. There's this giant blob of Bondo. It's pretty thick. I'm going to actually grind it out with the grinder. I think what I'm going to do is try to find something a little more aggressive to remove this paint and a lot of this pitting. You know, when he left this bare metal or whatever he did, it just pitted to HE double hockey sticks. In contrast, the kid and I wet sanded this with some wet sandpaper, I don't know, a year ago or so just to get the silver off because the fins were silver and it revealed nice original paint underneath of course this is just the way it was it was bare metal up here who knew you could build a house with a hammer driver's side is definitely the worst side this side i'm not seeing a lot of bondo there's a little blob there definitely some down there the door, I don't see any, even though there's dents here. This is probably a small patch of something. It looks like some was spread here, maybe, but there's lots of original paint there, which I like to see. The deck lid in the roof and the hood or another story, just right down to bare metal and just pitted to heck. Like I said, I'm going to try to find something more aggressive to just tear through this and get this right down to bare metal. I'm going to grind this out and call it quits and head to like Harbor Freight or something. I have yet to hear a compressor over there. After two years, I think. That is a lot of Bondo. So obviously this hole that's filled with Bondo was to pull out a dent because after stripping all this there's you know six more. If you're going to use these to pull a dent you need to actually get the dent out though I think because there's this mark right here where the door was clearly hit. Looking better. I will get this down to bare metal, or close to it. 
next day. Time to get serious. So, a couple people recommended this. So, Eastwood has one, and of course, Harbor Freight has one. The Eastwood one is a little more with shipping and tax, and it doesn't come with anything but like the soft drum. Where this one comes with three, and I bought an extra 40 grit one, because that's the one that's going to do all the work. So let's get this out of the box. So like I said, comes with a 40, comes with a 120, and a 240, which these two are probably useless for what I'm doing. So we'll put it together and put this bad boy on there and get to work. Hopefully this cuts my time in half. The compressor with the DA, I have to wait for the compressor to air up, and the DA wasn't really good enough to get all this off. This thing comes with a 90-day warranty, so let's see if we can destroy it before that time is up. The directions say put the piece on the work surface and then start the tool. That seems strange to me, but we'll, we'll start with that. And kind of what I gathered on, on online is, you know, if it's rusty like this thing is, a lower speed is better with a higher grit. So we'll try that. that worked well I like how on the fly you can change the speed and it's not like click click four or five you can just adjust it where you want and it's got the locking trigger it seems to work best if you keep it from here down on the material and once you get past here it wants to grab and kind of move it was really controllable though this fender is a mess so I'm halting work on this fender um, I need to get some other stuff done that isn't as terrible. There's a lot of dips and dings and dents and probably terrible repair. Um, yeah. We're just going to move on and come back to this. This door. Once again, dings and dents. It's not as bad as the fender. Some bad repairs. I noticed holding that wheel, you know, you got to kind of turn it to the edge of the wheel to get some stuff going sometimes. You know, if you want to get all inside, all in here and stuff and not have to come back manually with like a drill thing. It seems to be taking out the deep pits. You know, I went across it and then I went down it. And of course, I'm working in the rain here. Working in between the rainstorms, which is the worst way to do it with bare metal, but... Progress is progress, I guess. I can't do this in the garage. It's just such a mess. I'm not prepared for making that place an entire mess. As I was sanding this, I kept getting water spraying up onto the door, and I didn't know where it was from. Well, it was dripping out of the holes in the bottom because it's completely full. Now, I do remember scraping the inside here and seeing some chunks, but I didn't realize there was a mud dam in there. That's after scraping it all out. Look how thick this stuff is. And hard too. So yeah, the joy of cars. Back at it another day. Let's find out what's under all this. All this. <laughs>
know, looking better. As far as how that sander did, it worked really well. I mean, it was a little exhausting, but it wasn't terrible. What I noticed was where there was this gray primer and this rust, the primer doesn't prevent the rust. It's just a pl place for it to kind of grow. So the primer is not waterproof, so it's going to rust. The hood is a good example of that. I think this was all once gray primer and now it is all rust. I find it strange that this quarter was replaced with a full quarter, basically a full quarter, rust free. And for some reason they thought that doing it this way would be a good idea. I don't know how you would ever get this smoothed out where it would look good. Like I said before, we need to do better. So I spent some time off camera removing the rest of the chrome. I removed the trim here, all the taillights, the bumper, the bottom of the rear window channel, and the other side molding on the other side on the passenger side. This pot metal piece was not fun getting off because it has like clips on the back that slip on, like press on, and you gotta kind of screw them off even though they weren't screwed on and they're not easy to get to. But got them off, got the Dodge emblem off. A couple things that were revealed when I took this bumper off, I discovered how this was actually put on. It's very crooked. This does not match how this quarter should be. So luckily for me, I had a parts car with a good rear quarter section. So now I can section this in and have a nice transition from here down to where the bumper is. This needs to come out more, but it's a good panel. I think maybe some heat got into this and it's warped here. I don't know, really know how to straighten that out, but we'll figure it out. Now this car has been out in the rain for a week. It's been raining on and off. And that is the total of surface rust that is on this car. I started with the front fender, door, quarter, and the quarter seems to be rusting the most, but all in all, I'm okay with it. Once I get through this stage, I'll come back and sand it, do all the finish work, get right up to the windows and all this stuff, like right up to everything, and then I'll come back and wash it, put some rust converter on it, prime it, and then paint it. So I bragged to everyone that the goal for this car was to fix the rust, but not the dents. And I have a reason for that. Although I do kind of want to see if I can pop this one dent out in the door. That one kind of bothers me. The rest I'm fine with. On that note, I discovered an issue. So I took this rear piece of stainless off because I knew underneath it was a whole bunch of like caulking that they put in here from the factory. And you know, it's all full of dirt too. So I wanted to get this cleaned out, which cleaned up nice. There was no rust here. I got all the way across and then on the other side, the luck ran out. So when I got to like here, the factory caulking ran out and it turned into blue silicone. So I knew at that point there was an issue and it's pretty rotted. There's some big holes here. It's just not good. Now I could silicone this or seam seal it and it would probably hold up, but just knowing that it's there, I can't do it. Plus I opened my big mouth and said, I'm gonna fix all the rust. That means this rear window has to come out and this stainless trim is actually in the weather strip. That's how it's held on. There's no clips. It slides into the weather strip and it is not fun to get in and out. So I'm going to have to do some research and make sure I get this right because I don't want to ruin this trim. Getting the window out should be fairly simple. But I have to be careful because this one's tinted glass like the rest of the windows. So we're going to end it here. I'll continue sanding with that rotary thing. I ordered some stuff because I need to take care of this rust. This fin actually sits on top of this quarter so not only is there rust in between the two panels where this piece of trim goes but pieces of rust are falling out of here so i need to address this now i can focus on sanding just sanding until the next one thanks for watching say goodbye veronica